Okay, so in this video, we will look at some examples of geometric sequences, and in each case we'll ask quite simply whether the sequence converges or diverges. So here's our first example. So we look at the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 2 over 3 to the n. So all we have to ask ourselves is, what is r? Well, we're taking larger and larger powers of negative 2 thirds. So here, r is negative 2 thirds. And we look at the absolute value of r, which is 2 thirds, which is strictly less than 1. So we are taking larger and larger powers of a number whose size is less than 1, so the number will become smaller and smaller and smaller, and so on the limit, it will converge to 0. So the limit is 0. And that's it. Second example, the limit as n goes to, again, infinity of, say, 5 over 4 to the n. Well, again, we're taking larger and larger powers of a fixed number, that is 5 over 4, that is the value of r, An absolute value r is 5 quarters, as it is already positive, and this is now strictly larger than 1. So we're taking a larger and larger power of a number that is larger than 1, so this will become bigger and bigger and bigger. So the limit does not exist, but specifically, it blows up. What about this example? as n goes to infinity, negative 9 over 7 to the n. Well, again we're taking larger and larger powers of a fixed real number, which is negative 9 over 7. As always, we look at the absolute value of r, which is 9 over 7, and this is now strictly larger than 1. So the limit does not exist, but it is not positive nor negative infinity. If you simply rewrite negative 9 over 7 to the n, if you split the negative 1 to the n, and the 9 over 7 to the n, you will see why. As you take a larger and larger power of a fixed real number that is greater than 1, this will become larger and larger and larger, so this part will approach infinity, but negative 1 to the n will oscillate forever between positive and negative 1. So this sequence will be very large positively, even larger negatively, even larger positively, and so on. So because it oscillates closer and closer to positive and negative infinity, the best we can say here is that it simply does not exist. This limit does not exist either, but we can be more specific. It does not exist by blowing up to positive infinity. Here, because we have an oscillation between positive and negative infinity, the best we can say is that the limit does not exist, so the sequence diverges. Let's look at two more examples. Let's say 4 to the 2n plus 1 over 3 to the 3n plus 2. So this looks a little different, right? In our previous two examples, we had the nth power of a fixed real number. Well, this is not quite the case. We have a fixed real number to not just the power of n, but 2n plus 1. And here we have a fixed number Again, not to a fixed power of n, but to 3n plus 2. So is this a geometric sequence? Well, let's see. Let's do a few things. So in each case, let's split up the 2n and the constant term, and the 3n and the constant term. So this is 4 to the 2n times 4 to the 1. When you multiply the same base, you add the exponents, and this will be 3 to the 3n times 3 squared. 
the same argument, multiply the same base, we add the exponents. So these we can factor out as simply constant multiples. So we have 4, 3 squared is 9, so it's just 4 over 9. And here we can use the property of double exponentiation. 4 to the 2n is simply 4 squared to the n. When you double exponentiate, you multiply the exponents, and 3 to the 3n is 3 cubed to the n. Again, when you double exponentiate, you multiply the exponents. And now, with one final step, we'll retrieve a geometric sequence. Again, the 4 over 9 is a constant multiple with respect to n. We can factor it out of the limit, so 4 over 9. The limit as n goes to infinity. And here, both the numerator and denominator are powers of n, so we can combine them under a single power of n. So 4 squared is 16, 3 cubed is 27, and now we have our r. We have 4 over 9 times the limit of the nth power of this constant number. So r is, oops, r is 16 over 27, and in absolute value, this is strictly less than 1. Therefore, we are taking larger and larger powers of a number that is smaller than 1, so this will shrink to 0. But 4 thirds times 0 is simply 0. So the original limit is equal to 0. One last example. What about the limit, as n goes to infinity, of negative 5 to the n plus 1? over 2 to the 2n plus 3. So again, similar problem as in D. So we'll attack it in the exact same fashion. We'll split up the constant exponent, so we'll have negative 5 to the n times negative 5 over 2 to the 2n times 2 to the 3. Let's factor negative 5 over 8 out of the limit, as there is no n. This is a constant multiple. And 2 to the 2n is 2 squared to the n. And if we combine both under a single exponent of n, we'll have negative 5 over 2 squared is 4 to the n. So here, r is negative 5 over 4. In absolute value, r is 5 quarters, which is strictly larger than 1. So this limit does not exist. And again, it's not just positive infinity. As we have the negative 1 to the n, this will oscillate. So the best we can say is it simply does not exist. And that's it. So the only possible situation where things may be a little tricky is when you don't have explicitly a fixed number to the n, but usually with a simple bit of algebra, you can then retrieve your r to the n, and usually with some leftover constant, which really doesn't do much. And that's it.